Welcome to the Board of Education budget work session for January 30th. Let's rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I need a motion pursuant to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-304 to move into closed session to consider matters that relate to negotiations and administrative function. Do so I moved. I have a second. A, a motion and a second to go into closed session. Mrs. Wright. Members, please respond when I call your name. Captain Kelly. Aye. Ms. Harlow. Yes. Ms. McFett. Yes. Ms. McConnell. Yes. Uh, Wendy Affirmative. Okay, we're going into closed session. We'll be back around 6 p.m. Great. Okay, welcome back to our uh, January 30th budget work session. I forgot to mention we need to um, do one housekeeping. I need a motion to approve the agenda. So move. I'm second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda. All in look. Mrs. Wright. Board okay, members, please follow when I call your name, Captain Kelly. Yes. Ms. Harlow. Yes. Ms. Beck. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. <coughs> okay, first item is the budget survey results. Okay, so we're going to share with you the results of the budget survey. I'm happy to say that we had uh, an even greater, we continue to improve in our respondents who uh, participate in um, the survey. <coughs> so Mr. Pfister is going to go through the slides and each one of us will jump in with Mr. Pfister as is necessary. But uh, we had 436 respondents this year. Last year we had 316. And remember that's increases from the old way that we used to do it um, with the sort of, um, you know, face-to-face -face sessions that were not really frequented. So we're getting good responses and a lot of this information helps to feed the um, the priorities that we set. So just wanted to preempt you with that kind of information. So Mr. Fister is going to go ahead and get us started. Mr. Fister. Thank you, Dr. King. Board members, uh, quickly, just the purpose, of course, is to summarize the FY2020 parent, teacher, staff, and community budget survey. There's a snapshot of what it um, looked like when you went out there. Uh, Dr. King's wonderful picture there for everybody to peruse. Um, and we'll move forward from there. Um, so the overview here is uh, it was made available to parents, staff, and community stakeholders. We sent out three emails to all of our staff. We had, courtesy of Mr. Strait, three social media announcements. Uh, it was also placed on the QACPS website. And then finally, we did ask uh, schools to put whatever they have in their communication the last week to try to elicit some responses. And honestly, that, uh, that really put us over the hurdle there when we got the schools involved and asked to send that out into their communication to their parents. Um, that's when we saw a big increase in the respondents. Um, we accepted responses from January 4th through January 28th, so most all month. Uh, 20 questions in total, broken down into specific categories by parents, staff, and community stakeholders. So as Dr. Kay mentioned, response summary, we had 436 responses in total between parents, staff, and external stakeholders. Um, and then, it's, yes, ma'am. Oh, I just, when I watched the last budget survey, uh, the last budget meeting on the 23rd, there were 292 responses. So from then until today, we got that many more. Yeah, and I, th awesome. I, I attribute that to the schools helping us get the word out to their parents yeah, through whatever school idea. communication that they went. Yeah, yeah and that absolutely. was 53% parents. So if we got even more parents mm -hmm. at this time, that's great. Yeah, because, and that, that yeah, was, 57. that really telltale because yeah. back the, uh, about a week ago, it was 50-50. Uh, so I'm glad that we did get a little more parent input than the staff. You know, yeah. I mean, staff responses. Don't get me wrong; are, are great, yeah, but, you need, our but you need, but you need, you know, um, a diverse group to get you the results that you're looking for. Uh, so as far as the parent responses are concerned, uh, as far as their children attending QHCPS, um, 75 people had uh, one child. Many had two, some three. Very few had four or five children. That's broken up by the. Um, the chart there, um, kind of indicative of, you know, us as a nation, right, two children. The overall quality of instruction, one being the lowest, five being the highest. Uh, as you can see, 48% uh, responded with a four, 26% uh, responded at, um, I can't read those numbers from here, so I have to follow. 
uh, a four. So we did have great response that overall, just one general comment, you know, one term, how do we rate the quality of instruction in Queen Anne's County Public Schools? And you can see that we are at, you know, 72% or four or better. That's good. Breaking this down, I know that's tough to see on the screen, it, um, but your printed copy was one of the reasons I gave you a printed copy, was you could kind of see the bars. And looking at it, you could see the dark left. That, those were the very minimal, unsatisfactory responses. Um, as any survey, you would think most people probably just go three, 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 three when they answer their questions. So I think you're seeing that some of that here that, yeah, yeah we're average. But I thought it was of importance to note that 48.6% of the respondents marked it as above average or excellent. And that's almost 50% of and the uh, of takers. That's great. Yep. Say app. Yep. Dr. Kane, anything on the specifics of the, um, the individual categories there or? I'll meet with my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we did want to note that the, the categories with the greatest unsatisfactory um, ratings were um, CTE, World of Classical Languages, and Social Studies. And as we looked at the, the responses and the comments that parents and, and the people, whoever they are, that filled out the survey offered, really it's about limited course offerings, mm -hmm. right, for World and Classical Languages, limited pathways for CTE. Um, they wanted to see some additional pathways for CTE. So these are things that we already knew and they were concerned about the limited number of minutes devoted to social studies at the elementary level. So those were, in general, the reasons that people gave for the lower ratings in those three areas. Limited course courses in what? CTE, course offerings CTE, mm -hmm. and at CTE World and Classical so Languages and CTE pathways, language. yes. What, if, what pathways are there specific ones that we don't have that they're drilling, they're, that we keep hearing need to happen? Yeah, we need to have, well, people, believe, I believe people want to have more um, STEM-related pathways. People want to have culinary arts. Yeah. Um, and, and those are the biggest ones. We don't have electrician. Um, we don't have HVAC, we don't have HVAC. plumbing, we don't have electric. Mm -hmm. So in watching the meetings, what stood out to me, there's just so much generosity on the capital side of things. And then, you know, the attention paid to the buildings and the fact that the buildings have been paid, painted for <coughs> 13 years, some of them are due, and the state of Centerville Middle School and all this stuff, attention paid to the buildings. But what are we doing inside the buildings a lot of times? And we're not able to shift those priorities at this time to what is the fear of raising the floor of MOE and the programs that are happening within the buildings. Sorry, that's a little tangent and a little, maybe an almost soapbox. But it's, but it's accurate. But that's something that, and that's something the theme that after watching <coughs> the videos. It's like we can get what we want on the capital side, we can right. do what we want with the buildings, but what are right. we doing inside the buildings? Exactly. And that's where, that's where the attention, I think, needs to be paid uh, as long as the building's adequate. And we're addressing and, uh, this, too, with the partnership with the chamber. Exactly. Yes, so the chamber's like done too. a great job Friday, in helping us to bring, mm -hmm. bring light to this. Yeah. So, you know, we've done some traveling around, looking at CTE programs in different districts, and uh, we've had some partnerships. Obviously, you know that with Washington College. Yeah. Um, but Washington College's uh, programs are not certified for our students to earn the credits that they need for high school. Yeah. So that you know they've got some work to do in their willing partner but it's not something that's going to flip overnight so yeah. we need some time with them um what we'd have to make some decisions about and we've said this multiple times is we're going to have to make some decisions about what we're going to get rid of what are we not going to do anymore right. if we continue to, to be level funded we don't have funds to do new things and and that's what mm -hmm. parents are, are talking about when we when we look at the comments that are made mm -hmm. parents are talking about preparing their children for the future. And you can't do that if you don't have a variety of STEM and engineering type right. course offerings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're doing a lot of work, and you know that, with our equal opportunity schools to get our kids, more of our kids in advanced placement classes. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a good thing because parents are commenting about that as well. So we're on our way with that. But in terms of offering new courses, you can't offer new courses when you don't have teachers to teach them. Yeah. Um, so you got to decide what are you not going to do if you want to do something different. And, you know, it, that's, a, um, that's a hard thing sometimes for people to decide when the offerings are already limited. Yeah. 
I did the tour of the CTE programs mm -hmm. with Mr. Tolley yes, that one did. day, yeah. and um, they all looked beefy enough to maintain. There was definitely student interest. The the instructors were really into things. The the access to the resources they had in each program were good. I couldn't think of one that I would say we should get rid of that one. Exactly. Yeah, you know, they all seemed to have relevant student followings, who were finding careers and jobs based off of that. So in order to add new programs, it costs money. Right. Is if there you a want thought about child, any of these being taken away, the current CTEs that aren't producing results? Well, I can't say that they aren't necessarily producing results. There are varying numbers of students in the different pathways, um, and, I, and I can't, I don't think that we have any that are so low with so low enrollment that we want to discontinue it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Even on that tour, I couldn't mm -hmm. think of one that made sense to not exist. And I learned a lot, like the biomedical pathway. That mm -hmm. there was, I mean, there were some really neat And, and there were it. quite a number of students in those classes. Absolutely. Yes, there were. Mm -hmm. There wasn't one where there's like three kids and they're not doing anything. Exactly. And every instructor was really in tune with what needed to happen. And I never felt like they were just putting on a show because we were there. It was a natural flow right. of what they do. Kids will be the first ones to let you know that this is a show. Yeah, and then they never sensed or saw any right, of that. Exactly. As I understand, the expansion of that CTE program going forward will involve multiple counties, not just Queen Anne's, to keep numbers up. Well, well that's if like we share. start the building and the school the way right. the vision right. is, it would. Right. Um, but we put the building on hold to make sure that we had a full assessment of what we are currently doing and that we had the enrollment, right, to, to substantiate multiple million dollars for a building. Um, but what you're talking about is the collaboration between the five counties mm -hmm, and Chesapeake College, which is the one that I said is not going to flip overnight. There's a number of, uh, there's a bit of work that they need to do in order to get their program certified. So right now there's a kitchen you know, uh, uh, an industrial kitchen over at the college that would be primed for culinary arts, but there's not a program for it for our students currently. And that, again, would be an expense to us if we were to staff that. Mm -hmm. you, you have to pay for a teacher. That's another instructor that so we it's, need. Yeah. It's, it's um, Chesapeake College, not Washington College, right? Chesapeake, Chesapeake. did I say Washington? Yeah, I apologize, I just, I Chesapeake, okay. Chesapeake. Oh, all right, mm -hmm. yeah, well, one thing, um, in support of what you're saying, Carrie, and you're watching the board budget things, we we have had the mindset so long of, you know, operating within our means, right in where we are, our MOE, how are we going to justify the extra MOE because the cost of doing business has gone up and all that. So we we kind of limit ourselves, but part of our ability to attract people, to make good kids come out of school and all that, is to go to new programs. So. Yeah. The superintendent in this budget was going to propose at least some kind of a new program. And I think if we do maybe one new program each year and try to get that through right. the um, commissioners, I think it's important. It's important for them and their tax base because they're going to want to attract people here. The education system is important for that. And if we sit and do nothing but the same thing over and over and over with nothing new right. coming out, we'll, we'll die, I think we'll yeah, die well, we'll it's It's status quo, which we said is yeah, our enemy. Yeah, we're stagnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've done that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we'll look and, uh, um, we're hoping not to. Yeah. Okay. So just to, just wanted to give you some ideas. Okay. So go ahead. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, and it shows itself with this particular graph. This isn't really related to the survey itself. You're looking at these slides on the new slide deck that w present presentations going forward will be on, and I think it's much cleaner. It's much neater. Kudos to Mr. Paluski's group on on cleaning this up. Um, it gives you a lot more white space to show data just like this. So if this had been on the other slide deck, I think we would have had to condense it and you may not have seen it. So I just wanted to kind of bring your attention to this is how you're going to see presentations going forward on this particular slide deck. Um, I, I like the way the budget, watching the two workshops that I missed and, and this one too, the way it's being laid out and perfect. the formatting of it all seems perfect. a little easier to, di to understand or maybe it's just my second year. I don't know what, what okay. Michelle thinks, Thank you. but it's, it's nice. Thank okay. you. Summarizing some other parent survey responses, does uh, QACPS provide adequate CTE education pathways? 63.8% say yes. 
Do we provide ad adequate additional advanced coursework? 76% says, says yes. And do we feel our children are safe? And 78.5% say yes. So there's some good numbers there as well. Yeah, that's good. And as far as their budget priorities, their top five priorities, of course, are our small class sizes, academic achievement, student safety, competitive salaries and benefits for our staff, textbook, technology, and classroom materials. So you can see that almost from anywhere from between 68 and 55 percent of the respondents picked these as their top five priorities. And I think that mimics exactly what this administration and this board is looking for as well. Mm -hmm. And how, do we de how did we describe the academic achievement? Um, what was it they were judging? I can't remember. It, it was just a student performance. Yeah. And I think that this is the category, what it was called on the survey, academic yes. achievement. Yes, academic achievement, yeah. yes. Yeah. But it wasn't, but we didn't give a, we didn't, in the survey, we just said, what do you feel about <coughs> academic achievement? We didn't go into what academic achievement means in the survey. Okay. But okay. It, it is indicative of the responses earlier. Yep. Of, as far as our employee responses, our teachers and our staff, uh, 156 of our respondents were full-time, 12% were part-time. You can see the breakout there. 53% uh, of the respondents were teachers. Non-classroom support was 22%. We also got some school-based administration, some classroom support, and non-school-based administration was 12%. And to, I believe, Ms. Morissette's point a little earlier, uh, about 40, no, it was, it was you, Mrs. O'Connor, about 40% of the employees that responded to this survey have children in our schools. Mm, yeah. That's an even more layered response that you almost want to weight that heavier because they had the dual role. And, and because of that, somebody had the opportunity to go in multiple times as a parent and to give their concerns because the questions were not identical. Right. They were tailored towards the group that was responding. Right. So if I was a parent and I was an employee, you could go into this survey, we hope some of them did, go in twice because your responses could have been different. Mm -hmm. Yep. Employee length of service, just that big block there, 57.1% of our employees who responded have 10 or more years of service. 34% are 10 to 20 years. And then 20 to 30 years, 50%. Again, this is just the, the people that responded, the employees that responded. This is their length of service demographic. Is there a thought, you know, we talked about people maybe leaving after three or four or five years. Is there this notion that, like, once they hit the five-year mark, we've got them for a long period of time? Is that a trend at all, do you think? I'd, it's probably a stronger ten, trend that once you've got them over three years, you'll be able to keep them. That's kind of a historic view, though, but I think the marketplace of salaries is causing more movement. Mm. <coughs> um, I guess, you know, the other thing is that the issues change. Pe people who come here mid-career because of lifestyle mm -hmm. um, aren't as concerned, but are more concerned with benefits and mm -hmm. quality of life. Mm -hmm. So so when you say the market, I don't want to go down a huge trail, sorry to, to deter you here, but, but when you say more competitive salaries, are, are we looking at counties there, that they could easily go to one of a, a surrounding county that's a higher paying county? And which, which ones are those? I'm just it, curious. Well, all, in almost all cases, Anne Arundel. Uh, uh, so just back across the bridge, but not here the on the bridge. Eastern Shore. In some cases, depends on the job. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you heard the talk earlier about speech pathologists. Other right. jobs, certain, in some cases, counselors. Mm -hmm. um, Some cases, um, supervisor yeah. positions. More in other counties. So, or promotion. So since I've been here, we've lost a few um, of our teachers to promotions in our neighboring districts. Caroline, uh, promotion into Talbot. administration mm -hmm. because we sure. don't have as mm -hmm. many here. And it may not, it may or may not be school-based. Some have been school-based administrators. Some have been central office administrative where, where we have not had positions come open because there's very little movement here. Yeah understand. All right, thank you for mm -hmm. indulging Certainly. me for a minute. And then as far as the employees' budget priorities, those that responded, uh, overwhelmingly 92% said competitive salaries. A um, little surprising there was aging facilities um, because our facilities other than this building are in pretty decent shape. So that was, that was interesting to see that large of a percentage. Um, additional employee benefits, 
uh, we have great benefits here. Um, we didn't really go into, there was no, I want X number of be benefits, just a generalization of additional benefits. Advancement opportunities, we just finished discussing that, and then working conditions, and that's uh, part of the agreements as well that we've discussed. As far as our community responses are concerned, we only got 20 community responses. Out of that 436, only 20 of them were uh, from the community members. And you can see that 60% considered themselves a community member. 35% were retirees. We had no community-based partner responses, no business, uh, and, and no state local official responded. But we did have, uh, I think one makes up that 5% uh, business partner is how they deemed it. So, and so that's a kind of like a hmm. Yes, it, 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 that's a little emoji, <laughs> that hmm emoji, which had us to think about uh, the proposal for the um, public information office and how when we, if we are able to create a partnership um, responsibility within, and we're going to share some information with you that uh, cuts back on the initial proposal, but part of the responsibility of that office would be to develop and maintain community partnerships. And if we did have a consistent person who was responsible for connecting with our community partners, we could certainly encourage better participation in these types of surveys, whereas we had none. Really. Now, is that what Karen's role was going to be? Okay. And, but was she was not coming on at that salary level at that position that's proposed. Correct. She was. Okay, Correct. She was not. Correct. Okay. Correct. So she wouldn't have been a part of the exec team. But she did. But she did um, work with our partners, um, as did some of them, as did Dr. Pearson. So that's that really should be part of the right. work of that office. But you'll see a little bit later how we've changed. Yeah, uh, and I, I did listen to the notion of this person then being able to follow up with getting grants and donations and a foundation. Absolutely. And my question, and I don't even know, we can jump into it when, when we get to that topic, was just, you know, how many of our surrounding counties, are, are, they, are we big enough to create a foundation? Do we actually have people that want to donate to us? <laughs> was my question, you know? Can we use that in... You're going to discuss that. We'll discuss that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. and just making sure that the commissioners aren't like, oh, well, you can go get your donation money over there, cause, and then we'll just keep you paying you MOE, and that's all we got to do. That's the first thing yeah. I thought of yeah. when I thought yeah. of us getting dollars elsewhere. So is this link sent to, like, the chamber? I mean, I know we get things from Miss Friday. Was it sent back her way to share with And so we put it on our website. We did not specifically, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm correct in this, yes. did not specifically did not go out to our business partners and say, here, please complete mm -hmm. this survey as a responsibility. So that would certainly be the responsibility of a person that serves in that role. Yeah. But I feel that can be done without that position being created. And that wouldn't be the only, yeah, right. Want, that wouldn't yeah. be the only thing that they out. did. I don't and I know really you want to discuss it later. I want to discuss it later. That's fine. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. We'll we can move on. Sure. So Sorry, some, some additional uh, summary responses from the community overall. 50% uh, and can keep in mind so that's 10 people rated our quality of instruction you know four or higher 50% so, um, so sample size is pretty it's, low it's, yeah. they're great numbers but we just have to keep <laughs> in mind this is 20 people we're talking about yeah. and customer service this was something we threw in there because they do have to interact with us and I was pleasantly surprised that we had 65% of the respondents rated our customer service so when they went interact with our our board office or our finance office or our curriculum offices or testing or whatever um, 65% rated us a four or better on a scale of one to five. So I was encouraged with that. Um, their budget priorities, of course, starting at the bottom, going up, the academic achievement and student safety, they were tied at 70%, competitive salaries and benefits, and textbook technology, 50%, and again, aging facilities at 45%. So what are our challenges? <laughs> so, one of the final questions for those that went through and actually took the survey, what is the greatest challenge facing Queen Anne's County Public Schools? And the result is, drum roll please, adequate county funding. But don't raise our taxes. They don't want their taxes raised. Go get your donations. Adequate county Sell funding. Some more candy bars. Yep. So just to take that one, one step further, so the top five challenges came out, of course, is adequate county funding county growth uh, and the economy, uh, recruitment and retention of staff, infrastructure, and some of that involved technology and things like that, 
and then adequate state funding, and then all the other little categories lumped up is that other of 17 percent. But basically the thing to take home from here is 50 percent of our 436 respondents said adequate county funding is their, as our top challenge. So that's the outside looking in, to some degree, of what our greatest challenge is going to be. And, and once again, one of the comments that really resonated with me uh, came from a parent. And this parent is talking about what we were just talking about a little bit earlier. But this parent went so far as to say, you know what, um, in particular, she was hopeful that we would be able to offer some new programs in engineering, um, in with enrichment classes and things like that. And she's got children in elementary school and ho hoping that we would be able to offer something for her child. We've not been able to do that with our minimal funding. And that parent is ready to move away from this county because they know that they can get these uh, across the bridge. You know, it's got to move away from here, get new jobs mm -hmm. easily. They can <coughs> but then again, the quality of life and your your real estate and everything, you got to weigh that out. So well, I'm just making yeah, yeah comment no, about yeah. what this parent, parent said. said, and that yeah. parent said, you know, that they are they are ready to go find a job and 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 leave the district, mm -hmm. uh, the county, because they are disappointed with us not being able to offer new programs, in particular enrichment classes and engineering. Because we haven't grown into that, we right. have not added. Right. We, yeah. we have stayed stagnant. Because it raises the MOE and that's the biggest fear ever and we can't put this on the capital budget. And, and I, I pulled that one out because it really resonated with me but that was not the only comment of that nature. Right. There were multiple comments of that nature. Okay. Thank you Dr. King. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. So in summary, uh, parents prioritized lower class sizes, higher academic achievement, and increased student safety. Employees prioritized increased compensation, newer facilities, and more employee benefits. The community prioritized higher academic achievement, increased student safety, and competitive salaries. Uh, and 50 percent, again, of the respondents believe that adequate county funding is the greatest challenge facing in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And I know we had some questions and answers going through, but be glad to answer some more, or we can move on to other parts of the workshop. Did we have for the community um, uh, survey? Did we have it in there? Lower class sizes was that one of the yes. trying to small class sizes? Yes. yes. So they didn't say that, but they agreed with academic achievement with the parents. So I know there are only ten of them. Like you said. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Same with employees. Did the employees have in there about? Now, I don't class believe I size? had lower class sizes in employees. Right. I was trying to make it sort of unique, but I understand where employees would be concerned, and teachers right. concerned right. with lower class size. So no, we can I certainly think, tweak this for next year. But yeah, because some of those areas, we I think we should have Apple Snaps just to get an idea. Sure. Um, I just didn't want to make it the same set of questions for the same three groups. Yeah, understand. Because they do have a different lens that they need to look through. Okay. Moving on. So it, in, uh, in some of the things that I handed out um, in the order which we will review them is the green sheet that we talked about last time, the blue sheet we talked about last time, and then sort of a summary sheet, and we'll leave the summary sheet for the last time. So this, again, this is the green sheet I handed out. This goes through all of the school-based position requests and at the bottom the school-based MOI summaries. From the last two workshop discussions, you'll see that we have made, as administration has made some changes, and those changes are in pink, or they, if it is a change, or it is completely stricken through, if it is gone for good. And I'd be happy to go through that, or, um, you know, starting at the top, um, decision was keep the Bayside Elementary Special Ed request, keep the Centerville teacher grade one, but not to go forward with the Centerville elementary school assistant. Uh, keep the Kennard two positions there. Uh, not go forward with Centerville Middle's math or music teacher. Keep the Mattapique middle school teacher. Uh, do not go forward with the Mattapique school assistant. Keep the Stevensville middle language uh, middle um, language arts teacher and the Southersville as we talked about the uh, gateways to technology position and then at the high school uh, again striking the assistant principal request 
keeping the two positions at Ken Allen High School and three of the four position requests from Queen Anne's and striking the secretary nurse from Anchor Point. So what was last time 18 and a half positions has now been whittled down to 12. Now, how are these chosen as eliminations? Because I see one in particular that I didn't feel comfortable eliminating. And so what was the thought process? So, so which one are you referencing? The one I'm referencing is the debacle we had at Centerville Middle with the music teacher last year. And that's not going to go away. No, so. it's not. And as I told the parents when we had the parent meeting, that it is not going to go away. So what we did this year was we put a Band-Aid on it with, right. the, with, and the, I met the, gentleman. with the gentleman who was able to come in and, and teach for us. Uh -huh. And what, if you recall, the team mm -hmm. had come up with a plan mm -hmm. so that there was a more equitable number of students in each of those classes. Mm -hmm. And that's the plan that they were going to go with until such time as we were able to find a substitute to get in there, a long-term substitute. So again, there, this is a situation that is not going to be remedied if we continue to get MOE. The reason why this one was put back in the mix or, or we took that teacher, you know, we agreed to take that teacher out of there was that there is a plan that can happen with a more equitable number of students across that team without increasing a position. It's not ideal. Does it match Ken Island's? Ken Island. Amount. Well, we got two schools on middle Ken school. Island. Two oh, middle middle. School. oh, I'm sorry. Does it match so, the other middle Yeah, school? I was going to say, I think. It's not different than any other middle schools. Sorry. No, I think they no. have more of a need at this particular middle there school. There are more students yes. at this, so at this middle equitable. school. When I say equitable, I'm not talking about equitable as in comparison to other middle schools. I'm talking about equitable teacher to teacher on that team. Okay, but this their, their music program is struggling more because of the student population than I guess some of the other middle schools. I guess class size, basically, we're yeah, talking about. We're talking about class size. Is class it equitable to the other middle schools, too? I mean, we're, you know, that's what we're trying to watch out yeah. for. Yeah, right. And so that, that is going to be another big, huge t debacle. And I'm just ahead of it now because I know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the gentleman that was hired to come on, would he be there next year? Um, no, he's, that was not that, the agreement that, that he agreement. made with okay. me. Is there um, another person like, like just something because this will go big and fiery again like it did last year. So I don't um, know if there's any way to the, have that not happen by reconsidering that as a position that we're asking for. We certainly can reconsider it, mm -hmm. um, but we got to get ourselves prepared in the event that it doesn't happen. I can agree, but I'm just putting that out there early on that I see a bit of a big fire there that I would like to not have happen. Well, is there a way we can basically, if we don't have a story to tell them if, if the other, other middle schools have fewer students in their classes? Do we the know others, the comparison? The other, we, can get, we can get in that for you. In the music. Right in in the music. Uh, we, we can get that information okay. for you. Because it makes students it counter in music versus the teachers at each middle school. Because I thought there was, from what I recall, and I don't have the numbers right off the top of my head, just that, that there was a thought at Centerville Middle that there was more of a need based on the other middle schools and what they had as available resources for teachers and the population of band well, students. Part of it had to do with the number of students in those instrumental classes. The number of students in those instrumental classes was much lower than the number of students in the other uh, um, arts classes. Mm -hmm. So there, the school came up with a plan to, when I say make it more equitable, I mean the number of students per class on the unified arts team. Mm -hmm. So that there was not going to be one teacher with far less students per class than the other teachers on the team. So if you and I are on a team for unified arts, and I have 15 students in each of my classes and you have 35, that's not equitable. So the team came up with a plan to make it more equitable, which was, um, you know, to sort of divide the students a little bit better so that there wasn't that type of a gap between teachers and their class um, sizes. But before that happened, I was able to find a substitute to allow 
for that instrumental classroom to not have as many students yeah. as the other I mean, unified Hopefully arts we can classes. find some kind of solution other than just we don't have that gentleman anymore and we additionally are not putting right. another teacher into that position because they've been next off of this list. So, so what would happen there? The number of kids what is less. What would happen? Is what she's saying, the right? student. In one class. The, in one class. Without that position, the class size enrollment would increase, but the project, the program would stay the same. The teacher would just have more students in each class. That, that teacher was going to be responsible for teaching some general music classes as well as some instrumental classes. And so therefore, it would have been more students that that teacher would be teaching. Because I'm going to tell you, I am much more concerned about, and I know I'll get blasted for this, mathematics, language arts, social studies, yeah. than I am music at this point when we're looking at having made a reduction of five and a half, six and a half, and I really appreciate that because in the past we've never had the whole want put in front of us. We've been told what the requests were over the principals, sure. but that had been whittled down somewhat mm -hmm. before it was in our lap. Mm -hmm. And then we, in turn, whittled it down some more. And most often, the and powers that, that be the had process, to whittle right? it down and, some and more. That, and still the process, because, right? you know, So I'm very happy to see this mm -hmm. ha having happened, but I have got to concentrate my thinking on academic classes first and arts classes second. So we're talking about taking away a mathematics teacher out of that particular school, well, taking away a language, I'm sorry, not a language arts, um, a social studies, social studies teacher mm -hmm. out of the high school. And that has been a pretty let me, let me be clear. open spot for a long time. Let, let me be clear. So let's go to the mathematics teacher. Mm -hmm. This is Centerville Middle School. This is the same situation that we are currently in. Mm -hmm. So this is for an additional one. And the to reason, improve our conditions. Right, because remember, this situation is still the same as it was last year. Right. So we have a teacher who really is a special educator who is teaching math classes because we did not have a position for a math teacher. Right. So that principal did what he was supposed to do, and he's requesting a math teacher to free up that special educator. Right. In the but we've taken that out of this list. And we have taken it out in the event that because we had to cut some place and the really the thinking is because and I I I cringe to say the words out of my mouth. We've been able to do it. That is correct. I know. We have been able to get by. Um, how long that is going to last, who knows? I'm not certain, you know, I, I, I would not ever advocate for that to go on forever, but we're in some dire circumstances Absolutely. here. I agree. And we had to figure out, we had to, I mean, the lesser of two evils here right. is really what we're looking at. Right. And we've often been praised for doing so well with so little, but we're getting to the point that that can't service our needs anymore. And we ask ourselves, so why are teachers leaving? Why do central office? We're why do working people want to leave the county? Death. That's right. That's right. I, I totally yeah, agree. Even our, our warehouse has educator. no chairs and tables. This well. is a special educator special teaching that. Yeah. So what's going on with the special ed program when this is happening? Are we, we have some concerns about special yeah. ed across our district. Right. And that is, that is the honest truth. And you will see when we share some summaries with you with comments that our families have made with that budget survey, that is going to come out loud and clear. There are some concerns with our special education service delivery. We've been working with MSDE uh, to support our, um, our special ed team here at Central Office, and they've been working as they can. Um, but we have a vacancy in that department. Um, which we are going to need to fill because that is not an area that, I mean, you can be out of compliance and be forgiven forever. That is going to result in some major 
problems for us. And do our issues seem to be at any particular level, high school, middle school, elementary, or are we across well, the we're board? We're equitable across everywhere. Oh, no. it, it's <laughs> across, it, right, it's across the board, no, I mean, but I would problems. say we have probably less dire circumstances at the high school level than we have at the elementary and middle level. Okay. And we have met with the, the um, lead for um, special education at the State Department. She's been here. She's visited. We are in close contact with her, and they are supporting us. And they know what our needs are. Uh, we've, been, we've been working, and, and they've been able to help us. So, you know, we are not um, out of compliance in, in, in a multitude of areas or anything like that, but we are on the very borderline in some places with our service delivery. And, and our support. So right. And got work just to as do. a reminder for anybody who forgot, the reason the technology teacher is there for Settlersville is an equity issue to be able to balance out the gateway program. And not just an equity issue, which it is an equity issue, but it's also an issue of ensuring that we are able to meet our requirements for the Maryland Report Card right. with computational learning. Right. So some changes are being made uh, with regard to how that service delivery happens. Um, I believe it's been approved or on the way to be approved with the um, with the um, computational lear learning being uh, administered across the grade bands in middle school rather than just eighth grade. Okay. And I think can we need to put the, uh, well, I'm, I think to put the um, mathematics teacher back in the Centerville. For Centerville. And I, and I think we ought to get a, a readout on the si class sizes in the music programs on, in yeah, the middle I, schools. I, I, yeah. So it'll help us. I, I, I would like to continue to consider that and I do agree with you about the mathematics teacher at the middle school that can you talk to us about social studies teacher at Queen Anne's County High what is that doing by moving that out just yeah. you're saying here just scheduling issue it's been empty for quite a while hasn't it that's I don't been know open for a while Mr. P just spoke with Miss um, Hudak today mm -hmm. sure the the request there for the additional social studies teacher is as she's made her schedule um, and if you remember back when we've had to restructure some things to, you know, teachers are teaching more courses that, I don't say out of area, but they can teach in, in other areas, a certain section of that. And she's able to do that with her schedule, unfortunately, because she doesn't have the staffing that she needs that could put a full-time person that would teach all of that. So this request is that the social studies teacher to continue, and your question, Captain Kelly, was around the pathways, both of our high schools. This is to continue uh, to support that, a particular teacher that's teaching full-time in the pathway rather than teaching a little bit of social studies and a little bit of in, in the pathway, in the, uh, the academy pathway. So when I had spoken with her and said, you know, uh, going forward, what is your biggest area of need? and is certainly mathematics uh, and is certainly science. And this is another case where we talk about currently at Queens County High School, we have a, a teacher that's teaching um, during their planning period to pick up an additional math course. So, and don't forget that these are, I mean, these are all state required areas, uh, but she feels if she had to give one up, that would be the one to give um, up. So help me out because my understanding was that position was not under the employee who was doing Teacher Academy. When did Teacher Academy move hands as far as who the instructor was going to be? Well, it's currently the instructor that's, that's teaching that currently, but which is also teaching social studies. So this is to free that up so that it's a, you've now a, a full-time body teaching more social studies courses. But is, I mean, can, can, is there a need for that? I mean, I'm just saying, are the, is the teacher academy require that's her full, a pathway. that full-time? Yeah, or, that's a pathway I know for. I that, but I'm wondering how, what happens when this you, isn't you share it and you, this. you have enough to do two well, teachers. And, and a lot of these. It, cases you've got one teacher that's teaching in multiple pathways right but so, but there's I don't remember the long teacher long. Academy lead being a social studies teacher last year I thought it was a different 
I, as we started the school year, you know, she's making changes all the way up until almost the beginning of the school year. And I believe there was a teacher there that was teaching um, a section of social studies. What happens, what happens to the students in this particular subject, social studies, when we don't have that position? So I'm trying to say, what's the impact of re re removing this position? From so then class size will go up in, in other Con in other social, social studies, studies courses. courses. That Correct. is a big then, priority is me, for me this year is just to keep them as low as possible. After campaigning and door knocking, that was the consistent thing that I heard above all. And we saw the budget survey. Yeah, so and that, right. that's okay. important. In line with that's that as important well. to, yeah. to, to our families. And also remember when we spoke at the last budget meeting as it related to um, students coming from Ken Island to Queen Anne's, there's an additional 35 students that if, they, if there's a social studies course that's offered and maybe not down there, they're added to the enrollment in, at that school. And they're not staffed for that as it stands. And this, I think, gets back, as Dr. Kane said, to many of the comments that during the uh, survey where we're talking about offering more to students, mm -hmm. um, this, this certainly addresses that. Dr. Kane, um, just to kind of bring focus back to this, so the, the, I think this is all great conversation and I don't want it to be looked at in isolation, so I don't know whether it might be worthy to kind of go through these scenarios so that we can get to the end to see what the big picture is of what this ask is going to be and then maybe refocus and come back down to, okay, I am willing to ask for more money because we want to increase one or two positions as opposed to being isolated. I'll and leave it, that up it, to you and however you want to And it sounds like that's what you're saying, but we, we want to go over the positions with you and we left it this way so that you can see what you saw last week and where we further yeah. made reductions. So this was our recommendation to you and then we're doing as we ought to do and have conversation about exactly what the impact because that's where we've got to go with this what's the impact in that classroom and being that 86 percent of our budget our operating budget Salary. is people right salaries the people that teach these courses and the less people we have teaching these courses the greater the class size will be right and that is the reality so these are the conversations that we need to have. So just, we just wanted you to keep that in mind that we are really skimming to bare bones here anyway. Mm -hmm. But we were skimming to the marrow, right, by making further reductions in order to reduce the total ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get through this part then. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then we'll see what the additional costs. And, and so keep in mind the these numbers. Here. The first line is what they would be with this position funded. No, ma'am. Okay. The Help first number is what their current class size is as we live and breathe at today. Current. She's looking at the class size column. The middle, yeah. col the middle number would be if you, we yeah. requested yeah. that position and it was funded, that's what their class size would be. If you decided not to fund this position, that's what their class size would be next year. So it's what they because have now. Because basically yeah. because of increased enrollment right. in those classes. Like how are we going from That's 20 to 23? Right. Correct. That's right. Oh, you're, right. You are correct. Right. Right. Because right. you're, okay. you're not giving them a teacher to reduce their class size. Yeah. So their class size is going to go up. Mm -hmm. the, but their class size is already, let's say, off. Centerville Elementary, for example, cross grade off. one. That's already only at 20. So they are anticipating more students in that grade, in which is that why they're grade. asking for Coming in. an right. additional okay. teacher. And based on their projected enrollment, if you do not grant that position, their class size would be 23 next year. Uh huh. And possibly higher based on any new enrollees. But that's nowhere near some of these other schools that are showing 28 as their impact if we make no changes. Right, and, and we want to say that there is a bit of a difference between a first grade class that's and a correct. third or fourth or fifth grade class. Yeah, that's or correct. high school or, or middle correct. school. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So just moving forward, and then we can always come back because I, I want to I wanna make sure we get through all this, and then we can come back. So on the bottom of the green sheet is all of the school-based MOI requests. And as you can see in the pink, they've all been whittled down to zero. So that was $141,000 last week. It's now down to zero. So I just struck through what they were asking to buy, but the dollars have all been taken out. So, so I did. So it, it still is showing materials. what they requested. Yes. 
the, you know, like Centerville Elementary went, wanted, they currently have 36, they wanted 72. So you still are seeing what they requested. But as far as what we're recommending going forward would be not to change or grant any MOI to any of the schools. Any increase? Any increase. They would get yeah. what they got last oh, yes, year? yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, and it would That's fluctuate based on enrollment, but this would be increases based gotcha. on their needs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, only the only the increased call, and then you're saying current MOI budget. That's that's what they have right now today. Okay, got it. Thank right. You. So they wouldn't be cut off altogether. No, no. With just no, no increases. Funds. Okay. No increases. Okay. Yep. So that finishes the school-based side, and then you have your blue sheet, which gives you your non-school-based positions. And last week, there was a position up there asking for a director of community relations and partnerships. Uh, we have since we changed that. that, cut that position. Dr. Kane, you want to speak to yep, the Yeah, we the cut that position. And so you know that there are two positions already in that office. And so we are advocating to keep two positions in that office. So the ask is zero in terms of additional positions. But what I'll do is I will... Um, I'll re-align um, the positions, what the position's responsibilities are, the two, and the two. the two that we currently have. And the difference would be adding part of the responsibilities of a partnership, possibly to um, to work on a foundation and that sort of thing with the within the two positions that we currently have. But in order to do that, the salary is going to have to increase somewhat. And so you'll see a difference now of about, I think you see 32,000. Yeah, it's 000. in the pink block, 32,384. Okay, in the pink block, 32,000, uh, which is quite different from the 100 and whatever, 64 40. it was um, last week. So we've reduced the position. No additional positions. We've significantly reduced the ask, but we feel very, very strongly that we're going to have to increase because it's a clerical position. Nobody's going to do that work for clerical money. Could I no longer be a member of the exec team as that Correct. Work? Okay. All right. Well, that's nice to hear because I had some questions about that and had the dollar ask on it. Mm -hmm. Because this was the same exact thing we got presented with last year, it's very difficult to justify a director position and it shouldn't even be listed on our organizational chart as a vacancy. It doesn't even exist. It should be asked as a request. It could be signified as a request. We can't call it a vacancy. We do it's have not a, vacancy. a position. We do have a vacancy. Not have, for yeah, this enough, position right? that's never been created it's just yet. Just a way to show how it would fit in the organization, Sharon. That was all and was. I'll complete my statement with I get worried when I hear the word restructure. Um, I understand adding duties and updating job descriptions, and I'm hoping we will get to the compensation study, but I have a serious concern about restructuring um, departments. And, um, you know, we had this discussion last year, $50,000 for the position that has recently been um, opened from the loss of an employee is, is pretty in keeping with this county. We discussed this last year, but all right, I'll move on. We, we've had a lot of trouble, as everybody at this table knows, with that, and, and I'm happy to continue to move on. But if we want to keep getting what we've already gotten, we can keep doing what we're doing. If we want to show some improvement, if we want to attract the people who are familiar and experienced in this work, we're going to have to make a change. And when you restructure, what happens to the people that are already in those positions? We will ask that those positions are interviewed for. We will advertise those positions with new responsibilities, and anybody who is interested in those positions will apply and interview. I have a problem with that. That's the way yeah, that happens. Any, I have a problem with that. In the position? Yes. Uh, that happens in, in that's, other fields. That's the way it happens. This is not unique. This is the only the department we have even discussed anything remotely, con uh, remotely um, like this in, this is the third budget cycle. It's only this department. I just think we need to be very careful. I think this is a department, though, that, that has been, have had a lot of complaints about. That is absolutely correct. Job. It was the, it was the first thing that was said to me when I was Well, hired. sometimes yeah. when people <laughs> can't <laughs> handle the positions they are out. hired for, there will be complaints based on their material that they put out. And, um, 
that's just what happens. And so that's my recommendation for uh, PIO. And then so if you keep going down for operations, we had two positions listed. And one was for maintenance and an electrician. We have since cut that one, the request for that. The other was for a, computer, uh, a carpenter slash locksmith person, and we remained, we kept that one. What and again, these two do? came up last year. These were on our list last year, and we had to cut them both. Mm -hmm. I hate to cut either one of them, but I'm just do all day? not sure we can do what this. What does a carpenter locksmith yeah. do every, all Mr. day? Mr. Pender can explain. <laughs> I feel like I don't ever see a carpenter locksmith roaming around. Like, Probably where are they? <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? we don't have one. It's working. That's work. why you don't see them. <laughs> where do they, do they have a closet? Like, what do they do? There's all the buildings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Think about how many does he have a workshop? No, you think of talking about how many students go in and out of each classroom every day. Yeah. It, exterior, interior, doors. So he fixes all that? And all the doors, all the um, um, access All 14 buildings? Yes. And he only makes 57000 Yep. Do, Do we, we have any carpenters? We have one We're right very now. lucky. And no locksmiths? We have one. We have he's, one. He's, we, we currently have one person who is a locksmith slash carpenter. Who is that? I'm Can afraid we, we have to cut that. Larry Schultz. Larry Schultz. Is he sometimes in the cafeteria when I, uh, when I see no. him? No. Okay. No. We only have nine maintenance people. That's been the same way I've said since Ken Allen Hospital. You're right. Uh, 20 years. Ago. Yeah. 98 yeah. to yeah. You still have more interactive boards. You still have all that classroom yeah. technology. Mm -hmm. And you still have things breaking down. Is there 18 Well, the bottom line is we got to cut this budget. So <laughs> I, I'm i not singling you out, Sid, by so, any means. So I'm the, just saying we have a lot of work to do So here we went ahead and we did cut down. one of the two requests. And so the total there for staffing requests on the non-school basis, $90,264. Moving down the finance, the audit fees as an OLA recommendation, we decided to keep that. The other pink areas, I'm not going to go through each one of them. The pink areas were basically cut in half from the prior um, summary that we saw last week. Uh, stipends for curriculum writing, uh, basically materials of instruction. We, we keep talking about athletics and band, and yet Mr. Poluski probably doesn't have that much money to support MOI across the district, so there's an increase there to support all his content areas with additional MOI that does make it out to the schools, of course. Um, and then PD stipends uh, uh, for consultants, you know, reducing that $8,000 ask down to $4,000. Uh, official stays in there. The transportation, as we've talked about before, uh, the money's for those. And then operations, we did cut the, I apologize, I didn't pink that one. The building materials was cut from 200000 to 100000 And, um, oh, you can see I pinked the wrong one. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The pink is was 128, and it's now down to 28. That's where the hundred thousand dollar cut came from. I apologize. And then fixed charges, we really can't touch retirement or health insurance. So those non-position costs on the blue sheet total 842,157 dollars. When you moving on to the third sheet, when you take these two sheets and then factor in the placeholders that we have for compensation, all of that is now mimicked and is put over on this summary sheet that has the apple with the cross-hatched superintendent's recommendations and i'll start at the top just as a reiteration and go forward go through it with you um, our current budget is 98.67 million dollars we're expecting 694 thousand dollars from the state maintenance of effort for the county is 1130035 and to fund everything that we've just talked about since we started this workshop session tonight we would require an additional above maintenance of effort, just a little over $3 million from the county, giving the total county ask for $4.1 million. And the reason I'm wanting to bring that up and kind of move us to this point is in isolation, it's nice to add a math teacher or whatever, but keep in mind, adding back without cutting somewhere else is only going to increase that $4.1 million number. Right. And this board and administration would have to be comfortable in what that ask and what that number would be. And we've got to remember that we've got to give ourselves some room because the we don't know how the 1.5% is going to play out for teacher compensation. Mm -hmm. Whether it's going to come from us or from a how, funding source right. or from whoever. How it's going to play right. out. Right. And now, can we go back to this non-school-based, non-position costs, MOI? Because we've never had this before. You're asking for us to increase this to 842157 
is that an $842,000 increase or that's the total? And can you help me with what the increase is over last year's amount for this category? We've never had this broken down this way. So I can't look in my budget book last year and say, oh, it was only 300,000 last year. So it's, it is $842,000 above the current budgeted amounts for audit fees, stipends, but the big, the, if I can bring your attention, Ms. Harlow, to, to where the most of that money is, 270000 of that is in health insurance, 43 in retirement, 128 in operations, but $236,000 in increased transportation costs. Hold on, so then, 128 in operations? Yes. And what's the, your last one? 236000 in transportation. Okay, because that was our contract that we discussed. Operations we know is going to increase. Retirement and um, health, insurance. health insurance, we know that goes up every year. Mm -hmm. So, um, these are all uh, costs of doing business. There is, yes. Those are yes. mandatory. And that's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. When we take those and add them up and take it away from the 842, how much are we actually increasing? These things are given. This is, like you said, the cost of doing business, our bills go up something so nobody if, understands if, if i can just refocus you just on one second if you go to that last summary mm -hmm. go back to i'm, the I'm other thinking page. it gives you Green. sort of what you're looking for maybe in a little bit different format when you go to that that it's, first it's big level. grouping is mandatory yes. costs of one three four oh two eighty six what makes up what we consider mandatory costs is all of those items in that big box the with the thick black line around it which is the three over hires, the curriculum, staffing, the stipends, the security contracts, the transportation, the public information reorganization, retirement, compensation, and health benefits. Horizontally. Horizontally, yes. So that's where some of that money, Ms. Harlow, on the blue sheet that you're looking for, mm -hmm. when you get down into the additional considerations on that summary sheet, that's only $223,000 for those items there. So if you're saying that's million. absolutely off the, you know, you're not getting any of it, then that 223000 comes off. Actually, it's not even that much. I came up with 677 as mandatory increases that we can't do anything about the cost of doing business. Off of the 842, it's like 123. All, that's all that's increasing. Um, that's what I needed to know. I mean, because okay. we're doing this different than we've ever done it in the past. The 223, two, that's the 223, 130 that's is expendable. new stuff. That's stuff we can just take off right away, right? Yeah. What, the, which the part? Two, the, stipends. Two, the 223, 130, you said was like additional extra it, it, it's stuff. It's additional the stuff. first thing to block But off. that was our effort to pay more money for the curriculum instruction? Uh, um, stipends. Yeah, so if you look at, at, at this sheet, the, the, know you know, the summary, the, the one with the is. Apple and superintendent, if you go down to the bottom, it is $40,000 for Mr. Poliski's universal screener for 1,500 kids. It is $4,000 in PD consultants, which is an increase above the current year. It was eight, it's now four. Materials of instruction, it was a $22,000 ask above what we have this year. We've reduced it to 11. And stipends, it was 21000 or $21,500. It's now 10250 Maintenance. These are your folks that do but summer. I, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I just want to clarify, not to confuse, this additional uh, request is not to increase the hourly pay. It's to be able to do more. So, for an example, if I'm a supervisor and I really need to be writing five different curricula, as an example, um, but I really could use the six course, that's what that, that's just additional stipend money to do more development. It's not to increase the so hourly yeah, rate, it's, it's to get more work yeah, done. Your rate is on something, the hourly rate is on something else. A little bit in this $150,000 up in the cost of doing business. Substitutes and Compensation home. substitutes in, in home hospital. Oh, that, but exi that's existing hourly yeah. rate on business. Yeah, yeah. That's, not that's existing. Writing, right. Writing. That's right. the 2150 whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 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 That's what, yep. And then. So you have a need to do these extra. Extra courses. Mm -hmm. right? oh, I have well, they're all needs. They're all needs. I understand. I'm just saying. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. Which, uh, the, 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 the request I have is over half a million dollars. Oh. But we, we know that that's, that's unrealistic. The materials of instruction request that I have is almost 600000 So, and we know that 
that's why we're, we're really paring this back. And as Mr. Fister said, just in, in the MOI budget that I have for the entire district, 20,000, I think it's what, uh, 40, about 35,000, 20 of that is for consumables for the new elementary science curriculum that we have to pay residually every year. So that doesn't leave but, you know, a short dollar amount to spread among all those content areas. If we have enrollment as an example, we need a couple more AP books as an example. It would come out of that. We would supplement that to the school to support them. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Can, can we clarify enrollment? Because I had that question. In September, October, we were given a presentation and 16 was the number, but that must have been a just a complete mistake because the graph clearly showed 26, but now we're reporting a loss of enrollment of 36. 37.75 is what's reported to this. We were gonna, Why we were did that change from our report on September 30th? Yeah, so Mr. Um, Engel reported some preliminary numbers, so by the time it was all said and done, Ms. Supreme can correct me on this if I'm mistaken, it is 37.75 students less than last year's. From a funding okay. perspective. No. From a, so yes, from a funding when perspective. he told us that on September 30th we had lost 26, that was just a guesstimate? That, if I Go ahead. jump in. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what was showing in the system at that time. Mm -hmm. So what has to happen is we end up doing a lot of cleanup with schools. You know, was that student enrolled, not enrolled? I mean, there's a lot of different, and, and Mr. Fister has for you a whole paragraph. I think and I've handed it out. The one so, pager yes. has like four questions on it. So there's a whole month of cleanup that happens before an official report goes to the superintendent that she has to sign that goes to the State Department, that gets verified, and then that ends up being the enrollment then that we that our funding is based off of. Can, can I just ask that in the future we clarify that then? Because suppose we had said we lost 50 students, and we came back a month and a half or three months later and said, oh, we only lost 25. Now that number of dollar funds jumps Everybody's going to say, whoa, why couldn't you get that right in the first place? We need to clarify that is just preliminary numbers, just guesstimates. I believe you and I looked at each other and said immediately when 16 or 17 was reported, that's going to impact our, our MOE. Well, it's 20 more than it was that day. So yeah. be careful. I'm just saying let's be careful when we do presentations that no one walks away with the thought that that is the number, that there's additional work apparently that gets done. What we probably will do is change the timing yes. of that presentation, yeah. that presentation. so probably that it matches that. the number yeah. and that is yeah. and comes the, with the And the state. other thing if... And, and, and what had to happen is getting with schools to ensure that they withdrawn oh students that really needed to be withdrawn. Oh, right. um, you've got some information here. I'm just stating that for the public that doesn't right. have this. Schools not withdrawing students, um, right. ensuring that they, the attendance is correct and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So what is reported to the state and what is accurate is 37.75. So we have and, lost And that's students. great because mm -hmm. that worked actually, it didn't work against us. But if we reported a it, much it, it lower does. number or a higher number and it changed our funding and increased our funding, we could be in a really bad position. It, it does. Hurt us it does. We've we lost know, I know. And now we have but if we went back to them and said, oh, you owe us a whole lot more money because we gave you the wrong number back in September. That By the time we do well. our budget and we give our numbers to the, to the commissioners, I can only we have the number from the, the official state. numbers. So, right. so when timing. we do, if we do on September 30th say it's a number, we clarify its preliminary numbers based on final counts. Or do you better. You We're not going to do the presentation mm -hmm. until there we you go. have They're the right. final. There so you that's go. what we'll do. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, 
And then just in that lower additional consideration areas, uh, like we had mentioned, we reduced facility uh, building services, supplies, and contracts from 200 down to 100. And um, the electrician, locksmith, they're interchangeable. I think I got one X'd out on one and one on the other, but basically we reduced those two position requests down to one. It's $57,000. So, Ms. O'Connor, to your point, yes, you could wipe all that out. You're going to save $223,000 that you could spend somewhere else if, that's, if that was the wishes of you know, this conversation. I wouldn't um, be able to drop $100,000 in contracts. What? Like what we could, it would just be less work or less supplies that Mr. Pender would be able to purchase. Contracts? I thought you said it was contracts. And contracts. So con the contracted yeah. vendors, such as bringing in a heating and air conditioning guy. But you can speak to it. So say we have something that is above our capabilities of handling in-house. We try to do everything in-house, but you have to go outside. The cost of doing business is just going up, and we're not maintaining it like i said if you go through the budget it comes out to about seventeen thousand dollars per school and maintenance costs go to them. so seventeen thousand i just spent fourteen thousand at one school fixing an hvac issue so i'm down to three thousand dollars at that school for the rest of the year is, 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 that, nothing happens. is there a notion that we could pull out some of that money not the whole amount just to salvage a teaching position is that even uh, something that could happen <laughs> we'll pull out one. Out of the contracts. category, the category that we just talked about materials of instruction is that the additional considerations and oh, program considerations. Oh. If that is an area of low-hanging fruit that we needed to pluck from to then salvage a teaching position, is that something we could discuss, or is that like not in anybody's thought process? Well, what we did was we cut them. Um, the first group that's in the learning and accountability results that does what is that sixty-five thousand by itself? Is that is that what you're talking about? I was, I was just talking about the additional considerations and program enhancements at $223. All of that, all of that category. Yeah, like not, <coughs> is there a way to trim that down so that more money can be funneled to salvage a teaching position, or does that additional considerations and program enhancements, is there any room to pull from that to salvage a teaching position? Well, the bo it's going to come down to the bottom line. Yeah. And it's what is it that we need to do to do business. So say, for example, we took out $100,000 um, am I in the right place? We yes. took out $100,000 yeah. uh -huh. yep, from that. So we're at the bare minimum to function in that oh, area. So there's no room so to we already from cut. There. Yeah, we already cut it. Yeah, I guess I already see additional considerations as like this is the... And if it's, and, it, and honestly, if it is the will of this group, then, you know, we cut all of it. Uh-huh. But the bottom line of it is that the ask is still $3 million, basically. Right, right. It just shifted from one area to another. And I think that's what Mr. Fister was trying to get us to, is we can play around with 10000 here and 4000 there and, you know, and that kind of thing. But the ask is still, gonna be whether high. it's two point, say we cut $100,000 right down at this bottom or $200,000, we are going to go from an ask of $3 million to two point eight. Still three we need to cut about two million out of this budget, and the only way you're going to do that is to cut. We positions. did last year, exactly. And so we really only reduced our ask four hundred thousand dollars from last week, correct? A million should Already, be over a million. Um, one. Well, it's this over a million. is five million two hundred and fifty-six. Right, so and today to 4. it's four point eight. Point eight. Four point one. Wait, am I looking at the wrong sheet? Two. Last week this was five point two, and now we're at four point one. I mean four point eight. Well, why are we at 4.1 if my sheet says 4.8? 4.1 is what the total county ask would be. So the, adding the 1, 1, and the 3. But our total revenue is going up by $4.8 million. Oh, I, I still don't get it. I mean, the bottom line over here yes, last week was 5,256,685. This week it's 4,829,400,000 dollars difference. I'm going to have to ask that. I mean, you can take it line by line, or you can take it as a total. But you took the fund balance oh, out. Know, She's looking at this up here. This, hey, this Ms. Harlan. person. Yeah, it's the, the numbers computer. Are you? What is the date of the? Yeah. The does it say as of one twenty three twenty nineteen on the side? Here, let me. This one. Like What's that, that date? One sixteen or one twenty three? One sixteen. That's one week. That's two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks. Well, 
Yeah, so let, I would pull that one out, I would. Because that didn't have the state revenue projections during our first budget work session. Uh, maybe it's right here. 123. There you well, go. five million seven, mm -hmm. and we're still at four million eight. So well, it's no, I just. Um, you know, we've had all these teaching positions. I want to know so, where are central office and administration positions that may be cut. And I don't dollars. think it's fair to just say so, there are none. So to Ms. Harlow's point also, I wanted to bring attention yeah, to on well, your summary sheet, yeah. but then we're just, the all one we talked about was getting manually highlighted pink yeah, item up here. Be some places to plug so in fund balance is, is zero. Yeah, Last two that. weeks, it was a negative 234. Right. So. What that means is we will begin in FY20 using $234,000 of our own fund balance to make that. this work. So to Ms. O'Connor's point, we're asking for $4 million, and we're also funding 234 of it ourselves. Had that been a negative 234, we would have been asking the county for $4.3 million. So we are funding some of this budget ourselves by using fund balance once again in FY20 of the same amount that we did in 19. That's why it's a zero. So that, so that 234, Ms. Harlow, and the 900,000 gets us to the 1.1 1 .1 reduction in ask from the county. Okay. Now, don't mean to be confusing with that, but I hope that cleared up something. Can I ask a question? Um, so I see the school based position request summaries and the positions that were eliminated from that. Is What about positions that may have been eliminated at central office or at the administration level? Are there any other than the one I see here being the Kent Island High School assistant principal and then over on non-school-based position request summaries, the public information officer that is not even manifested yet is being taken well, out? Well, neither did the high school principal. and They didn't exist yeah. at all. Yeah, okay. So what, what the about the, you know, the, the hits being taken on the teachers? Are there any central office staff where electrician. The electrician. just the electrician is being eliminated? Right. She didn't ask for any right. addition. No new ones. No new okay. Ones. Are there any positions that could be cut that aren't in the school-based position layer of the salary chain? No, I mean, not last year, the year before, five central office positions right. were cut. Which was part of why we couldn't perform the legislative audit and the findings and take care of those things because you had such limited staff and I get And it's that. not any better. So f generally folks here in central office wear two, three, four, five hats. Yeah. Um, so you cut one and that's really going to put us in some dire straits. Can we get, could I just get a printout of who, like what those So you, you, positions, you do have, the, she does have something. Like who we, are all the people that I know where it is. are so, wearing all the hats? In so in hats. your budget book, uh -huh. you'll see um, the categories for um, ad, uh, mid-level, you'll see administrative, you'll see mid-level, you'll see special education, you'll right. see all but of them. none of those are up for cutting. Okay. Okay, did... And Ms. O'Connor, if I can just clarify, just to question. make sure we're all on the same page, that these are not cuts to current this is a positions. These are positions. cuts to what was requested what, what was above requested? current. Were any, were any positions requested above current at central office? And no. Okay. no. Just the PIO, which I cut. Right. Um, or took back. I yeah. shouldn't say cut. <laughs> I should it never say pulled back. Anything. Exactly. Yeah, you can't yeah. cut something that doesn't right. exist. Okay. Exactly. Just because I get this, I get, I, I hear a lot in the community that, you know, it's the big, fat, bloated administration up here sitting here doing nothing, and, and there's all these extra people, and then it's the teachers that end up suffering and getting cut. Now, I've been here enough to see that that's not accurate or true, but I still have to ask these sort of questions as we go through. I feel it's my duty as a public office holder. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I want to readdress this thing about um, making us whole, the making us whole mm -hmm. comment uh, the commissioners gave us. Mm -hmm. um, now that they're funding the the, the uh, school turf fields, um, we were asked to provide information on what makes us whole. And I think whatever we're yanking out of this proposal, Ooh. any of the stuff we're yanking out of here, are those required to make us whole? So that's it, what we need. I, that's that's probably um, a, a loose term, making us whole. But I'll but I'll take you through that summary sheet 
obviously the mandatory costs of $1.3 million, that has to make us whole. Okay. But then the cost of doing business, the big number in there is amount for negotiations. So I would consider that making us whole because we're trying to bargain in good faith with our unions. So it would probably, if I had to guess, it would be everything underneath the cost of doing business, but you're only talking $250,000 is what the rest of the ask is. So if I had to say, right. honestly, right off, this is, our, this is getting us out of uh, underwater because there are some things that we should be doing compliance-wise or whatever that we're not doing and won't be able to do if we don't get even the stuff down here at the bottom. I would say we would also then need to throw back in any of these positions that you We could do that. But then you but then just keep in mind your ask no, is going to be 4.2, 4.3, 4. whole. They're interested in what's making us whole and they want they want to get a general idea of what percentage we would need in addition to that each year. And the percentage in addition to that would be at that point any of the raises or any of the compensation we need to make in addition to the percentage of these two things, mandatory costs and cost of doing business, and I would add on at least one new initiative each year. So that would be the percentage that they should give us each year. They're asking for which that. Is a, which is close to 5%. Right. So we're, we're and and, and, and I again, don't think that's unreasonable. Right. right. If we were to get all of this, I would say it almost resets the bar where we would be able to go. Our increase for the future years is there's going to be a 2% escalator on transportation. There's 5% escalators on all the software license agreements we have. Okay. 5% for health insurance, 5% for retirement, and then whatever we want to put in as, as a good compensation increase for our employees. That's our, that's our, that's our plane for the future. Yeah. It could be that simple. Right. Yeah, I've but we that. constantly play catch up with what we haven't that's gotten funded. They have asked us. I, they have to heard that too, the, uh, like a five-year projection. So we no. get some kind of a but They've asked for um, what we need to make us whole, mm -hmm. which is Picking up all these things that we're suffering with. Well, it's more than that. And I mean, until you catch your staff up to the current level they should be, they're not going to be whole. And you can call it anything you want. You can say it's greedy. You can say that the county doesn't do it. Until you get them on par where they should be for their steps, you haven't made this organization whole. Yeah, but that one last step... It I know, I don't keep, yeah, really. They're always like, that's so the least of their worries. Like that, they think, so too bad, so sad. We all yeah. suffered when the economy was bad and you got a lost step. You know, I, I just don't see a whole lot of sympathy for making up that lost step. And you're is that what you're seeing that in the federal and the state level? So yeah. it's not just, it's not just here locally at home. Right. It's, it's everywhere. And right. they're not made up. Right. And the right. federal doesn't. And I think what we, we did once before, back when we were trying to recover from 2012, um, Mr. Lazard actually checked the surrounding, in particular our biggest competitor was Anne Arundel, and checked what, and we weren't that far behind on salaries and stuff at that point. I don't know what it is now, maybe we haven't progressed as, as much as they have over time, but it would be useful to have that too so we can let the county well, that is why we approved. know why we... Why we're asking for that is, we need to make ourselves whole. That is why we approved a $35,000 compensation study back in February. I cannot believe this is almost is February, a year it later. It was It, it did. No. I asked you guys to go and watch the meeting. I have it dictated here word for word. Okay, what does you it say? You and I both uh, asked on several occasions what who it did say? it cover. Across the board, every one especially teachers, because we have such a hard time filling critical areas in our instruction pool. So what have we we've asked for in that contract? Anything? We haven't done teachers I, I can't believe a year later we still don't have this compensation study, but fine, we don't. And we approved a $35,000 amount to cover all staff for a compensation study. And now I'm being told we didn't do all staff. Let's hear what it is. So we didn't let's, spend $35,000. So what happened to the difference? And it was clearly indicated that going on the website and how we have done our comparisons for staff salaries in the past is a very inexact science and not a good gauge for us. We must become competitive. We must do better 
we as a board approved that compensation study because of all of these reasons. Okay, so what is it? What's the status of it, Mark? We did not include teachers in the compensation study. We did include all the uh, specialists, uh, all the support employees, um, and we have the results back preliminarily. We just need to schedule the briefing by the consultant to brief the board. So and that who covered, made the... That covered $35,000? Who made the decision to pull out a group of employees? Because it was touted to us that it would be all, including teachers, all employees. Who made the decision not to include I teachers? Cover all that. I don't know, but I'm going to take responsibility for it. Let's say I made the decision. We have comps for teacher salary. The state puts out the teacher salary, so we have that information. So that's that's not an inexact science. That's quite well. We, I can we have just that information. I could read all four pages of my notes, but I can tell you what Mr. Farley said. That looking at the classifications of all the positions and the gathering of marketing information, in order to prepare us to engage with our union colleagues in determining what is an appropriate compensation structure, how could we approach this? by combining information and looking at the positions and determining what is an appropriate market-based wage as we move through collective bargaining processes or making a recommendation to the superintendent or the board on compensation structures that is appropriate for recruiting and retaining the most highly competent teachers and staff. $35,000 for all of our people, which would include recommended, structure, uh, recommended structures as well as classification review. We've never done this before. Use the company Queen Anne's County used because we got a very good rate from them financially. We were able to kind of piggyback on them. It saved us money. Um, okay. okay. Comp yeah. No, let me finish. Compensation items, that, that is something we would like to, okay. Um, I would be for, I, I questioned, would it be for all of our employees? That's my understanding from the proposal, Mr. Farley. Could our step structure be affected? The proposal says that they will make a recommendation. So I even said that could help us or hurt us. We could find that we had positions that were very overpaid and we'd have to really justify that or find that we had positions very underpaid. Captain Kelly, you said, what is the problem we're trying to fix here? Mr. Farley, I don't want to speak for the superintendent, but I will say that we have some people among our support ranks who are below the poverty level. We have difficulty in recruiting and retaining people in critical shortage teaching positions. So I would say objectively, some of our compensation structures are so compressed that people feel they don't see rewards in their later careers. Those are some of the problems I think we have to face. That is why everyone was included in this compensation study. We gather financial data through groups like MABE and the Maryland Negotiating Service, which we are members with both. But that is not as exacting as it needs to be because we are not always looking at apples to apples. And so the process first needs to be one where we first describe the discussions and they, as they exist here or the dis Decisions, I'm sorry, and then hold them up to a market comparison, which is what a compensation study would do, that is effective where people find it to be credible and only through a credible and unobjective third party can we reach this and make it an effective process. That is what it takes. This is what I approved $35,000 for last hey, year to you, help yeah, me I with understand. this new budget process Sharon, and I'm feeling Sharon, neglected here. Sharon, I understand. The point is they did spend the thirty-five. dollars You did get a company. There was a decision somewhere along the line which I don't, that to, where the teacher's not included in it because that information exists with the, with the state, Maryland State um, Board of or State the Department of Education. So if they had $35,000 and in that readout you just gave, it's Those your understanding of what it would en encompass and it would encompass all that. Evidently they're finding out it didn't encompass all that 
And this is why we should not be transferring funds ahead of getting bills. We have had this occur in the past where we transferred money ahead of having a job done, and then the job falls short oh, or job. our funding okay. falls Excuse short, Sharon. and it doesn't cover okay. what it's supposed to cover. I We've made an improvement in that Excuse under Mr. Fister. Let we're me not, finish. We're not going Said anywhere. Said that he's just, not going to do okay. that anymore, but this is a prime example of we were led to believe this was what okay. we were going to get. And it. now I don't have this data Here, for today's you budget You meeting. don't have what you need. You think you need, it, you need for the teacher. They have another method of handing us the information for the teachers. All right, and then fine. he has all the rest of it. Sometimes these contracts work that way. They'll, they'll, he, he, in all of what you read, he made an estimate. He said, this is what I think it's going to cover. Here's what we're working on. And if No, there was a proposal. The way, there was a proposal. Yeah, and then, and, and and there was a proposal. Right. Yep. And you, and, you, and you are absolutely right. right. Those things did occur. So we right. did have, we had our employees accept the teacher group because that is the place where we do have scales. We do have scales, and we are not confused about what teachers' responsibilities are. There is no confusion in that area. We are so very we confused at, about not how we're paying them. No. Yes, that's why they continue to come back and ask for their lost step. I'm that's only, additional career but earnings that's, But for that's them. not their scale. The lost step doesn't have anything to do with their scale. That has to do with the funding availability for what we could pay them. It's not, it's not related to the scale. That's not the issue. When we did the compensation study, we looked at all of the other employee groups. Particularly, we looked at employees employee groups, employee positions that may or may not have been a part of a negotiated unit. We looked at those as well. There's some fuzziness with some of the jobs that we have in comparing them to other districts around us and what we ought to pay them, not with teachers. Right? So there are some variances between what we pay our teachers on our scale, what Anne Arundel pays, what Kent pays. There definitely are, but we do have access to that information. So that is not, that wasn't necessarily the issue. The issue was the other places, so, or the other positions. And we did ask our employees to participate in that um, compensation study. We asked their supervisors to participate in it. We did get that information. We we did need to get some more information um, to uh, the group MAG that did our compensation study, and we did that, and they have got to get some information back to us. They are going to come and present that data to the school board so that you can see what they uh, are making recommendations for. So all of those things that you read, that is absolutely accurate, but we were not including teachers because we do have that information. Well, if that's Mr. not Farley, what was presented. If and Mr. Farley, and I he did, disagree. you read that he said teachers and staff, that was misspoken because we did everybody except the teachers. We are not confused about the scales for teachers. Well, and you know, we had balanced out not making any compensation changes or hiring any new positions until this study was done. And fortunately, we didn't hold to that. We did decide to restructure our support group. And it cost us a lot of money that we didn't have, but we would be sitting here another year with our custodians and our um, support group, our paras, without having gotten what they got last year if we were still waiting on and we agreed the compensation that it, right and study. this we, body we agreed that it was a dire enough situation right. that we didn't want to wait but and so we agreed the reason to for move the forward. compensation study was to be able to have that data this year for the same purpose yeah. but for the other groups all right well we need to move right. on because we're beating a dead yeah. horse so, over so and over so so did you so not we, see mrs harper's questions excuse is me is that why they weren't answered did we come up with a change it would, did we come up with a, a solution? They're not finished with their report for us yet. On no, this they whole thing. need to come and report it to you. But remember that one part of this job was job analysis questionnaires, right. which is looking at the content of the job. When Dr. Kane spoke about us not lacking or having confusion or not lacking information on that, we can get right to the compensation and we can get recommendations on teacher compensation. But we don't have to ask them what they do because we know. And a special ed teacher here does pretty much the same thing as a special ed teacher in but the Worcester. support do not. 
percent. That, that's great. That was because the so many people wear so many hats. Primarily yeah. support. But I know the teachers were included in that discussion. But you figured out you didn't need to do that part of the analysis. That's correct. Okay, and then the com com comparables we have to look at is what each county has decided to do to pay for their right. teachers based on the money their Very executives well give them. Yes. So, so that's why we may be in a different location than, say, our adjacent counties. And that's what we did back in 2000, after 2012. We started looking at comparing us to Anne Arundel. We actually laid it out. You know, someone with three years in, someone with five years in, you know, and what sure. the differences were because we were trying to attract and to retain those mid level teachers, as I understand. And we adjusted the step scale to help us accommodate them and give them a little more so they stay longer. And you, and you did research. that without a compensation study. Right, yeah. right. Because we knew, but we just had to compare to the local, <coughs> local counties. Okay, so what you, is that your, in your presentation? We need to figure out where we're going with your what? presentation. Wait a minute, there was a whole three pages of questions from Ms. Harper. Did you not see those? No, I, I saw them. They just they came in uh, Tuesday at 11.30 and just haven't had time to formulate okay, the answers, I, but I'm we're working that. on it. I mean, I'm fine because I'm nowhere prepared to even support <clears throat> or deny this budget at this point. But l let me just make a general statement with regard to uh, Ms. Harper's questions. Um, the answers to Ms. Harper's questions really can be found in um, the budget book. So how many positions for special education uh, and that sort of thing, how much are we spending for, you know, that budget right. for salaries? Right, and I agree, yeah, that, I agree. So, and, and that's the reason why we got it late um, you know, we were preparing for it today, so we didn't go backward, but those can be found in that <coughs> book. Um, at, what we did want to explain was how everyone is reading yes. that five-year trend chart. So let's just have Mr. Fister to um, be clear on how to read that chart, because I think there may have been a little bit of confusion for, <coughs> for how Which chart is that? that? I'm sorry. The, the five-year five year trend. Oh, okay. The one that says okay. five-year cost comparison. And I just want to reiterate, nothing related to the <coughs> FY20 budget is on this piece of paper. I know. That's nothing, 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 difficult. nothing, nothing. Yeah. It's so it's giving difficult. you five years of historical spend trend. It's giving you a five-year average of those historical spend trends. It's giving you the budget for FY19, which we live and breathe in today. And keep in mind, we're talking actuals for budget. So it was what we actually spent last year versus what our budget is this year. So it isn't like, well, why did the budget increase? Because you're only seeing one budget. You're only seeing FY19. So it isn't that, that, that budget could have been that same amount for 20 years. You're not seeing that in this diet. This was more for historical purposes only. I mean, this was just my predecessor put this together. I continued it in the same format. It's really for historical as to what we've spent in the past and what my current budget is now. Has really, right. it helps us formulating the FY20 budget, but there's nothing related to the FY20 discussions that are on the, all these other colorful pieces of paper that's reflected on here. To that point, some of Ms. Harper's questions are related to this document. It's like, why did this budget increase? And you really can't say that because you're only getting one year of budget. It could be, why is this budget $4,000 more than last year's expenditures? And that would be an accurate statement. But so I just wanted to kind of clarify that. My question on that, I mean, is we were used to looking at that, but I think we're not looking, <coughs> we don't, don't look at that at this stage of the budget because it's not developed to that point. Correct. Now that we are well, going forward with this paper, at this new way of presenting it, I guess what we're wondering is, this is probably a lot of work, but is is there a way to put the next column in based on what we what what she puts out as the budget to us? Yes, that will happen because right. when the superintendent does her budget, then we, we produce a version of the budget book at that point based on her recommendations. Absolutely so, we would. So all of these things that we say yay or nay to increase. will be incorporated into, not this document, into the budget document the full budget book that will have our 19 budget, it will have our 18 actuals, right, and then right. it'll have a column of what our 20 request is. Well, and that goes to, Sharon, you're up on this too. The process that we use when we do this budget is it goes to the superintendent is supposed to be presenting this to us on next Wednesday based on all the input we've given and the cuts they've made to this point. 
That's why we, we have haven't made any cuts, though. They've made cuts. We still need, in my opinion, to reduce this budget some more. And because we aren't even seeing what is proposed, it's virtually impossible to think about what you're going to take out. May I, what do you mean you haven't seen what's proposed? We have dollar amount increase from last year. Okay, if in it's a column. cost I just of living item, okay. we can't okay. change it. If it's a program we've never had or a position we've never had, we know when we nix it how much we're saving. Got it. And sure. we can add all that up for a bottom line Let me at the end. Listen to the column. When she presents her budget, if she goes with just what we've settled for today, she presents her budget to us at the $4 million over point, there will be another column in there that lays out 2020. We have two budget discussion meetings again to see if we want to bring We it. have to approve Excuse this me. next week, we do. don't no, we? No, we approve this March 6th. Am I get that right? No, but that's part of what our question was. Depending upon where we got with this today, we're going to suggest that we move that February to March. That's what we did last year. Yes. We, we did, did it. We yes. approved it March 6th. Or the <coughs> but first you vote on it after her presentation. But she we presents it. She it. will present it at the meeting next week. And Wednesday. that's when we vote. No. Yes. Well, you're not going to present it next week. I, I okay. don't think that we're I ready that to because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that this type of debate is um, conducive to consensus at that presentation. So I want to get all your questions answered so you feel like you have enough information to make a vote, to cast your vote. So that's what today is about. So we want to make sure that we have whatever questions you have, we can get you your answers, and I am happy to make the presentation afterward. If it is your desire, I'll present what we have so far in next week. Um, but just like, you know, Ms. Harlow was saying, if you all are not at a place, and I know that, you know, time is an issue, if you're not at a place where you feel like you're comfortable with the recommendations that we have made, and that is what we presented today, the recommendations for the budget with the numbers, which you did see the increases over what we had last year. That's what all those documents that's what I was were. Just so not you in this have seen format. that. That's yeah. correct. So that's what we talked about mandatory costs and cost of doing business. That's what that is. And so the positions. You looked at those as well. You looked at the school-based positions. You looked at the non-school-based positions, the green sheet and the blue sheet. So you have all of that information based on our recommendations. The debate was the positions, and, and rightfully so. Centerville Math, Centerville Music, we had some discussion about those. Uh, Queen Anne's County Social Studies has some discussion about that one. So there is still some discussion that sounds like it needs to be had. I hear some comments about the for the three million dollars over MOE that we're asking for. What's going to what's it going to take to make us whole? All of those are the right conversations that we ought to be having. Um, and so my request would be to wait until March to make my presentation. Um, and, you know, in the same month, we can still make the present, I'll still make the presentation to the county commissioners, just like we did last year. But it seems to me that we are not at a place okay. where okay. you are, you know, comfortable with the recommendation that I have made as of today. And I'm happy to hear what other recommendations you have. So, so um, we have some more discussions, make some more decisions than when you present the budget to the public, mm -hmm. the, the first meeting in March, we, we will have to have an agreement that that's going to be the one we're going to accept. That's the way it works. Without a change. Yeah, okay. that's the way it works. Until we get our funding amount, and then we go yeah, back then to we square do this one. Again, but okay. Uh -huh. so <laughs> do you, with our guys. scenarios. <laughs> this is slightly off topic, but are we just going to be like, OK, textbooks say in the capital budget again this year? Because I don't hear any movement about making that transfer. So I guess we're just going to go through with it like we did in the past and talk about it next year? So we have man made the comment to um, commissioners, not the whole body, but commissioners that we have met with. Um, I, I have not sensed that there is, um, you know, uh, a movement. Um, a desire to, to raise to, the MOE to, floor by putting tax. Right, 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 and that's right, kind of what we go through right, every year. So I guess we're just right. sort of like. Mm. I mean, we we can't make them do that. Right, right. 
Um, something I would like to request too is we requested this last year and I don't know exactly why it didn't happen. Maybe because of where we settled with compensation and everybody was okay. I would like to see our executive team contracts. We've been flagged for that in our legislative audit. That's because they don't have twice. Them. We've been told Over that. 12 they don't, years. They don't okay. Have, I'm the only one with okay. a contract. So I'm just telling you that it's surprising me to see these allow these auto allowances that I didn't ever see reflected in anything we received in the past. That's always been yeah, there. We, that doesn't been. have anything to do with whether or not they have a contract. Well, <laughs> we sort of differ on that, but that being said. Um, and they were doing, they're doing the study, but the year is not up. That's what they're, what they, we were what told study? last week. But auto no, they only have, have two months recorded. The they didn't start until two months ago. We asked for it last February. That's we should true. have a year. That's not true. That's what Mr. Fister said. They it's only had about two months. It's been more than two months ago. Yeah, I Started know. Started in July. But yes. Yeah. It's it's not, not, but we were told months. that we only had about two months of data last week in the meeting. But that doesn't mean we started it two months ago. We started this over the no, summer. What I mentioned, Ms. Harlow, is some people are still back in December and some have not put uh -huh. in any data at all. And we asked for some additional time and send out some information and that we're asking for this information to kind of get them caught up. So well, I'm just concerned because we've never seen an auto allowance pulled out in our budget um, numbers before. So this is a big surprise to me. And it's a lot of money when you add it up over all categories. Not just one, all the ones inclusive. There's okay, three that aren't included. We are at eight, eight o'clock, and so evidently we need to have a lot more discussion. Um, so what, how do we move forward here? What so, you so we've made some recommendations. I hear you about the Centerville, the three teacher positions. Um, I am more than happy because heaven knows, just like I said, I cringe to say the words out of my mouth. I am more than happy to put those positions back in there because they are need. And that's why we put them in there to begin with. In order, with respect to Ms. Harlow's comment um, about, you know, the $4 million or the $5 million that was the request last week, we, feel, we felt strongly about narrowing the ask because of the comment. Although the week before, we were of the mindset that we need to ask for what we need, and that was what we left with. But after last week, we realized that some changes needed to be made, and so we went back and cut central office requests, and we did cut um, some school-based requests too. Happy to put them back in there. Um, it is just what the will of this group is, but what Mr. Fister tried to move us to, and which we have to be mindful of, is the total ask. So if you are, if you are as a consensus, not individually, if your consensus is that you are willing to think about asking for $3 million or more, then we put them back in. The $10,000 here, $5,000 here is not going to get us anywhere. We already know that this budget is contingent upon positions, bottom line, because as you can see, we got $200,000 that are not positions, basically, that which are not mandatory. That's still $3 million, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. So you got to decide what you want, what you can, you know, stomach in terms of positions or let us go ahead with the ask with the, what, what we feel that we need. It is not a whole lot of wiggle room in between. It is not going to be a $2 million ask. That's not going to cover compensation and benefits. So we have to get rid of the thought of that. That's not going to happen. Well, I don't know that anybody said $2 million. I mean, well, we went you, to them we for 3, in half 3. From what it was six last before, year. We're talking $2 million. What did we ask? Uh, last year was like 4 point something. It, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but that included the lost step. Our ask and last year was, there, was 3 was. No, we took it off. Uh, I mean, when it was on there, it was 5.3. When we took that out, it was a $3.4 million dollar request, 3.6. Over, yeah, addition. No, that included MOE. Didn't 3.6 include MOE last year? What was our ask last year? Less the over step. Over. We went over, over. Uh, yeah, it was like 4.2 or something like that. Well, it was 5.2. Okay. With the lost step, but without the lost step. That was a $900,000 thing. Nine, the step, the last. Right, right. 
it was a total of 5.4. Right. Uh, we and I had the last step, here, which it did, which You're is 947. Mm -hmm. So, which was about a, a million dollars. About a million, so 4.4. 4. 4. Yep. So, so, so reading, what what yeah. we the, where we go forward then is, I, we really do need a column next to this, with what you, we come up as the the budget the that we're pardon the ask. The, the ask can give us some guidance, and if we end up, I don't know how hard that is to turn that into this. But so that's why we did this sheet. So is, is yeah. this it's is this not helpful for you? No, you, it's just I really not. I, I would like. I'm just. I would like to go home and read and digest and. You know, I, I mean, I, like, I did watch the videos to play catch up, I, but yeah. the virtual like academy is still in here somewhere, and I would hate to, it's not. Y'all didn't put that back in because we had oh, asked for I that had, last um, week. I had to go a, back in. I had a random question. Uh, well, I that's why this is confusing because Miss Harlan, the only thing we're asking for is on this one on piece page. of paper. So one yeah. page. Um, that that is. These above. are the only this things is, we are asking for as a district going forward, is on this one piece of paper. Um, yeah, but I don't know. But that makes it easy. Done. This is random, but I got to get the question answered. I remember last year we kept debating about a nurse at Anchor Points Academy, and, yeah. and then it was That's on there, and then it was yeah. scratched off. So 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 how, how are we? And then we had discussions about how they it's could walk here, over but we've taken it to the Centerville um, school to get the nurse, and yeah. there was this whole discussion about what we do with kids that need the nurse there. So what is happening this, that, now? That's, that's still here. Oh, it's the here. nurse is still mm -hmm. there. But we okay. took it off. It's right but, here. But it's, at the, it's the last off. one. But it's scratched out, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It was oh. when they cut off. To so we could to lower add this. that back in. So, so those, that's what I'm saying to you. Those are the decisions mm -hmm. that you need to make. We've given you the asks. Yeah. We've given you the increases. So I'm not sure what else it is that we can provide for you. I, I'm comfortable with what I've been given and just kind of digesting it all. And then I'd like to meet again with, with everyone, our group. Yeah, we, we have a point. We yeah. have a on the schedule for next, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. I'll make sure that's right. on my phone. But um, just to clarify, so is there a nurse now over there at Anchor no. Points? There's no, no nurse. There's no okay. nurse. There's no nurse. So it's, a it's, it's not a school. It's a program. Right, and we had this whole debate. They could just walk over to the Centerville that's Middle what School they, or the Centerville Elementary School. No, the nurse comes here. The nurse comes, the nurse comes, over, the nurse comes over there. Or the nurse supervisor and so goes over. Is that even working enough so that we didn't well, it's always been have that to way. put the nurse there? It's not ideal. That's yeah. why we asked Nothing for else. a part-time mm -hmm. yeah. part nurse. Part -time. Okay, I just wanted to get that. I remember that discussion from last year but yeah. but there right. again part-time I didn't see that ref did it say yeah. half a yep. point I mean a half one yep and but we, no. we matched it with the halftime secretary that they asked for so yes that is here at the bottom of as the a green as sheet. a one but so that would be two half-time positions yes a half-time secretary and a half-time nurse for a full-time position did we have a dollar amount no see that's where this gets just Really convoluted. The dollar amounts week. were on this sheet. Okay. These remember this was a position sheet. The dollar amounts on that sheet is on this. But sheet. it doesn't say what for the nurse and what for the secretary, does it? No, no, it does not. It was lumped together with all the teachers as the total ask. Yeah. But I can. And, and you want him you to have divide the total ask. You do. You have the total ask. Need to divide that out. They will. <coughs> That's what he's with saying. Pleasure. Because when but we had the discussion, like the, only the one half yeah. problem. So. But Difference in two salaries was discussed. A nurse is definitely different than a secretary. Yeah, that, that's why it would have to be two half-time positions. Right, and that's going to be difficult. So a part-time nurse. Thirteen. Is there? My question to you, Sharon, is what is other than maybe ha looking at another column and being able to look at the five-year average and maybe make some decisions? But the changes are all right in here in these papers. Yes, all as one total amount, right. and I don't like that. I like seeing line by line what we were going up. We were able to go in and say, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do this. And at the end of 30 deletions, we had saved $2 million. It was tangible numbers we could see we had removed. We could say what we didn't fund. It was very evident. Um, you I didn't divide. realize we what? hadn't added the virtual academy back to the new paperwork, but either way, it would have gotten lost in the mix anyway, because nothing is that's accurate. pulled that's out. That's not accurate. No, pulled that's out. just not accurate. It, what, it, what you it, got is just It seems like it's only me having a problem, so. Yes. Yeah, because it's kind of one, three pieces of paper for us to understand what changes happened. I, I know that, but I within those changes, 
it's almost like we're being told you either take it all or you leave it. You can't go in there and pull out. We can with the positions because yes. we have a tangible piece of paper that has 12 positions on it. But other things, it's these full lump sum amounts. I really think you're going to have some serious questions to answer presenting it in that manner because they're going to say, well, how much did that cover of this particular category? So you got $550,000. How much of it was for blah blah? We can't answer that because we don't have it broken I'm not down sure that where way. You can't answer it because it's right here. Okay. In total, in total. In total, right? Curriculum and instruction, stipends, life skills. I don't want to belabor that point, but <sighs> this is pretty much a line item. I agree that it's not aligned to a line item in the particular budget book document. Well, I'll just say they didn't like it before. They're going to not like it Materials even more. of instruction, all content area, it's $11,000. It's not $1,000 spread amongst 10 lines. It's $11,000, but it's, it's all in one area. So. Well, and it gets difficult, too, when you have to say that different positions are paid in different categories. So you might get paid out of this l segment of the employment categories 50% and 25 out of this one and 25 out of that one. But that doesn't have anything to do with our ask. But but it does. It does because you're 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 singling you're 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 taking how much how much is administration? How much is instruction? How much is um, special ed? Then you're showing in the old way where that amount came from. What could be that changed? Have what can be to do with our asks? Well, I, I'm just saying I think maybe, that's going to be the problem I that we're not showing how we got our asks. Maybe you, maybe we, you should talk. Yeah, we said how we, we got our asks. Yeah. We got our asks by right. speaking with our schools right. and speaking with our central ask office departments. That's how we've been doing it. We said that from the outset. That's how we gave you the positions that were being requested, the stipends or whatever MOI were being requested. We already, we already gave that to you. Tell me specifically, and we will do our level best to get you, and that's where we were going with this, right. is tell us mm -hmm. what questions we might be able to answer for yeah. you so that you have enough information to make a decision because once again, it's going to be about positions because the rest of it is nickel and diamond. We can nickel and dime till the cows yeah. come home, we but it's not going to get us too. anywhere close <laughs> to a million dollars because these allocations are so thin. And as you can see, what my recommendation was to cut all of the MOI asks, increases in the asks. If you want to put things back in there, we're talking, what, $7,000 here? Um, you know, it's, it's not a lot of money. So, but if that's what you want to do, you certainly you did can cut do the that. MOI. Yes, oh. we cut that to zero. Yeah, yes, she did. She yeah. just said that. I get. I guess what we need to do is make sure we all understand the the three pages. This is the best information, in my opinion. This one sheet that has the overall yes. whole picture yeah. is going to be easier to defend what we do because it's really specific other than going to the book and saying, well, in, you know, in administration, we cut this. We only cut this, and I think this just gives me more talking points, full if, talking if, if points. If you were to go, let's, let's move forward one month, and th these would be your walking around document, or this would be your one-page walking around document rather than a 60-page yeah, budget book. This one here. What did you all yeah. ask for? Well, we asked for compensation, we asked for bus contracts, we asked to fix some overhires, and we got a little bit of materials of instruction for our curriculum areas. It's all on one it's all on one page. You don't have to flip to page thirty and page sixty and back to page forty two to see the couple thousand dollars. It's all sort of on one page. So this would be you as a board member, you're walking around document when you have to support the budget that you're passing, it's basically on this one document. Yes, we will provide you the full budget book, and you but got this it. is your walking around document. Okay. I also think that we try these different formats every year, and it's always like, no matter what we try, oh, it's too confusing, you know. And so that's <laughs> and why we tried to simplify not, not for it for us, you. But I meant not not for us so much as when 
I see it presented to the commissioners. It's that edit layer of, oh my gosh. It's and, like, and so all of this is <laughs> no simplified. Matter what format we use. Yeah, right. But this, but I mean, for heaven's sakes, three pages. Yeah. Three pages is. I yeah. like it. I, it yeah. makes more sense to me. I don't know if it's because I got a year under my belt or, or what, but I can more easily grasp. Thank you for that. But I, I do like the school base, non school base. Because then people, you know, yeah. what are we doing with schools? Right. Why are we, you know, doing, why are we adding all these positions in non-school? We aren't. Right. We aren't very few we're adding in non-school. Right. So, I mean, it really is helpful. And then you got individual positions and why we're doing what it, yeah. I just think for me trying to explain this to the commissioners is going to be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it is. And the rest yeah. of that is your, is your backup. So if you really needed to find yeah. out, if somebody says, well, exactly, just like Ms. Harlow said, how many special educators do we have for $4.9 million? Then you go flip back to page 21 and you see a 77.13 or whatever the number is, special educator. So you got that as your backup, uh, you know, background information. But what's important is the ask. What are we asking for $3 million for? That's what these documents show. Yeah. show. So I think for the next meeting, or whatever we would study happened. these a little more. Um, we do need to go through these individual questions, I think, a little more when Ms. Harper gets back make sure that that is satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, I think the discussion is very important and it's good that we're having it and it's good uh, to me it's given me a little more background to explain it mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. But uh, and and if you all would, you know we have to have another meeting to discuss yeah, this. Yeah we do and it's also for me I don't think it's a bad time for me to just gently share with my fellow parents that now would be the time to start showing up at some commissioner meetings and voicing that you would like to see some priorities put on education funding rather than you know at the end when you had masses of people coming you know just right. getting kind of getting people that I know who are interested in this geared up the people I know who would actually go public speak starting out early so we have a consistent sort of population flowing through there not 50 angry people on the last night <laughs> well that's a great idea yeah and that's what our survey said Number yeah one. so I mean I just verbally will start to introduce that to the people who approach me in the you know this is a great way you can help out you go to a commissioner's meeting and use your public comment time to speak to the notion of how you would like to see funding happen so I'm shifting those conversations from and the honestly, on us and me you're, to you're, the you're right. <laughs> but you could help us yeah. out. Go do but, but we had a nice commitment from families uh, from Centerville Middle School who yes. were upset about, you know, and, and a lot of the families said, yes, we <coughs> did hear you say that we were going to have to make cuts, but we didn't, we didn't really think you were going to yes. do it. Um, and so th there was some commitment to speak before the budget right, is struck, it where it chaotic. makes a difference. Got to speak up now. Yeah. And those speeches are sometimes more well thought out and less emotional versus the mob scene at the end where <laughs> it just has been ratcheted and up. I think, and they listen to it more because they it's do. just one person. It's not, oh, here goes um, another one. Here's another one. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. So so I was, does I, everyone understand what we're doing next week? Then we're going to. So next week. We need to continue the discussion. Yes. I because just want I want <coughs> us to get into a consensus so that the superintendent presents something first meeting in March and we say, vote on it and say, go for it, at least the consensus. And so we will have Mrs. Wright to um, make the um, revision to the, um, uh, um, sorry, the um, calendar so that it does not reflect that the superintendent's budget presentation will yes. occur on February next week, uh, but on the first board meeting in March. Okay, so next, it's just to run down our dates. I got them off of this thing. So we're at um, February 6th. Is right. our regular meeting? Thank you. Yes. Um, February the sixth is our next meeting Wednesday. That's the reg the, the regular meeting. That's the regular four, meeting starting at four thirty. And you're not presenting the budget that day. Is Correct. That right. right. And then February thirteenth, um, is our five work to eight work Correct. session. February 20th, um, I have 11 to 2 for the work session. That's still 11 to 2. And 2 to 4 for and school two to board four orientation. For orientation. Then you'll get to see exactly what the few people that work in the central office are doing. They'll give you yeah, every it was job good. I they I want to try and get to it again. It's amazing yeah. to, to see what they do. Um, <coughs> and then the 6th will be <coughs> our, our regular meeting, and that's when we, we will actually have the superintendent present the budget, okay. and we will be agree we will have a consensus that that's what we're sending forward to the super okay. to the commissioners 
right. and then we're going to be back on the uh, twice a, twice a month meetings yes. instead <laughs> until we get the budget back from the commissioners in probably May time frame. Then we may need to have a couple extra meetings in there to um, cut it back. Hopefully not. Yes. Those are tough tough ones. So is everybody clear on that? Okay. Do you have any more questions? Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. Dr. Kane. No. And, okay. and still, you know, just as always, if there are questions that come forward between now and next week, send them to us. We have a running log, as I think Ms. Harlow has logged into, with questions and answers so that you don't have to wait a week between um, the time to get responses. If you're studying your, your work over the weekend, if you give us a question, you know, before the weekend, uh, we'll get to it as soon as we can and make sure you have it. Okay. Okay, good. The other thing I want to say on March 6th, on March, I'm sorry, February 6th, since we're not presenting the budget, um, I work with the superintendent on the creation of the agenda. Mm -hmm. So if there are agenda items you're interested in, you have input to that. I don't have the, the only say on what happens with that. So please let me know. I'll talk it over with you and we'll okay. talk it over with the superintendent. And okay. we can have budget and we have agenda items develop with that in mind. Okay. Okay. Um, Real quick, that March 20th school board work session, that's a 5 to 8. I just assume that right. that's 5 to 8. That is, no, that's the that's the regular 11 to 2. Oh, let's say 11 to 2. My apologies. Okay. Right. So we're having school board work session 11 to 2 on the 20th, but we're also doing 11 to 2 on the March 20th. According to the um, handbook, we oh, have right. to start at 11 on the third third Wednesday of the month. Okay, because I know we were 11. trying to do some 5 to 8 and some 11 to 2. I just want to be straight on we'll, that. What we'll have to change the, uh, have a fourth, have a, um, a vote to change the handbook to take out that time, then mm -hmm. we'd have more flexibility on a time. Okay, I'll just uh, make sure. And every I... board going forward would have the flexibility. So we're going to do that. I just didn't want to deal with it right now. We got no, too much. No, that's fine. I just, I'll just much plan accordingly at work and just make sure nobody's scheduled for those two days during those hours. Right. It's 11 to 2. Yeah, on 11 to 2 on uh, third Wednesdays mm -hmm. of uh, every month until we change it, the handbook. Yes. Okay? Yes, thank you. All I'm right. Do I have a motion, uh, a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Okay, the motion is second. Um, Board member, please respond when I call your name, Kevin Kelly. Hi. Mr. Carlo? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. And Jordan, affirmative. Okay. okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.